Hey everyone, I'm Aunt Rachel. I am the owner of Journey Back Quilts and your guide for your quilting journey. Today's video, we're going to do a tutorial on how to baste your quilt. So I was gonna go through a couple of the products that I've used in the past to kind of, well, throughout my journey on how I learned how to baste a quilt. So let's see, hi Amanda, glad you're here. So the first product, well, let's see, let's wait for Judy to pop on. She should be here any second now. So how's everybody's Monday going? If you're local to the same town I'm in, in Casper, Wyoming, we had a snow day and we had a lot of snow. For them to cancel school and stuff is a huge deal for us here. We're usually going no matter what. Hi, Erin. Hi, Rayfield. All right, well, um, the first product that I have tried to use in the past to baste my quilt is this quilting basting spray. So you can find all of these products I'm going to be talking about in my shop on journeybackquilts.com and um, Judy may be popping on here and putting them in the links as well. So this product was really helpful when I was doing smaller quilts like baby size quilts, um, table runners, things like that. So I wouldn't use this necessarily on a really big quilt. Um, by the time you spray it on and you do a section of your quilt and you're pushing all of the, the batting onto it and stuff, it just becomes a big giant mess and it's kind of stinky. You really need to use it in um, a well uh, ventilated area. So make sure you do that and don't spray it around your sewing machine or anything that might get the goo on it. Um, anything that you don't want to get sticky or things inside your sewing machine, stuff like that. So I wouldn't really use this one as often. Um, it's great for those small projects. So the way you use this is you lay out your backing um, face down and then you'll spray it on it and then lay your batting on top of that and smooth it all out so it's nice and flat and then you'll spray another layer on the batting and put your top on top of that and it will stick all together and should be pretty straight and flat um, but like I've said it's only really worked well with smaller projects not the bigger projects anything that's a throw or larger it really didn't work great for um, let's see another product are just straight pins, so your straight flower pins, and these pin mores. So I found these through another quilter, and they are pretty cool. Let me show you how they work. So you take one of your straight pins, and when you put it through your fabric, you use this little pin more to cap the pin. So it's almost like a little eraser, and it just caps it so you don't poke yourself while you're quilting. So I will show you how all those work here in just a second. Let's see. The other way that I have tried if basting my quilt is just using a curved safety pin. And this is my favorite way because it hides the, the pin so you're not poking yourself. You can get them in and out easily, but they also stay so they um, they won't be pulling out like all of the little pins might. Now, how to get your quilt to lay flat when you're basting it. That was the biggest challenge. So I've seen people who have put them on their hardwood floor or their tile or linoleum. Um, you definitely can't do it on carpet because it wouldn't get it straight and flat. And they would use painter's tape to tape down their backing so it would stay nice and flat. Um, and then I've seen people who have used the pool noodles to roll their quilt on so they can pin it as they go so it stays nice and flat. Um, I've tried both of those ways and I didn't love either one because I still got those puckers and wrinkles and stuff on the back and I hated that. I'm quite the perfectionist and I hated it. So I'm gonna show you how I did mine um, before I got my long arm. Um, I use those utility tables, the big six foot white tables that have the folding legs out and they were so short that I was bent over trying to get everything pinned and it killed my back. 
Um, if you haven't heard my story before, I've had several back surgeries and um, some other injuries and stuff, and just bending over kills me. So my husband, who is ingenious, thought, he's also a plumber, let's put PVC pipes. So he put like a six inch piece of PVC pipe under each of the legs and it raised it up to counter height for me. And that helped so much when I was pinning. I could just stand up straight and be able to reach most of everything and pin it. So I'm gonna move the camera here and show you exactly how I did that. So hang on a second, let me clear my table off. Let me see if I can lower you here. See all of our blocks on the wall there? Getting all of those done for our class. Okay, that should be good. My handy dandy tripod thing here. Okay, so what I used were just utility clamps. Something like these where you can just pinch them shut on the table or the ones like these and I have a link for um, Amazon for products like these. I really like these because they stayed nice and tight. So I have some backing material here. This fabric is so cute. It's by Christopher Thompson, the tattooed quilter. I got to do a class with him this last fall. It was so much fun with my mom. So you would lay your fabric out right side down and I would just start on one end. Okay, back up here. When you cut your fabric or you go buy your fabric, you are going to want to add at least six inches longer and wider than what your quilt is. So this fabric is 108 inch wide fabric. So it will fit this small quilt perfectly. I hope you can see this because I can't see you anymore. Let me double check. You might need the little, be a little higher. I'm gonna take it apart here. Sorry about that see if that's any better or not. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. Okay. Let's see if that's any better. No, probably the same. <laughs> Trying to get you to be able to see the full table here. a little better as long as my tripod doesn't flop over. Okay. Where was I? All right. So we've got the fabric and I would just take the clamp and clamp it to the table and my fabric on all four sides. I did try to get the fabric to be centered in the table. So I was working from the center out, but because this table is so small, I'm going to start on just one end here and show you how to do it. So let me straighten this out here. That way my fabric stayed straight and flat and it didn't have any wrinkles in it. And as you notice, I kept my cutting mat underneath here. So that way when I'm pinning, I can kind of move it around so I don't accidentally scratch my table while I'm pinning. Don't want to do that. Done that before. I used an iron, iron-on fusible batting one time and I uh, did it on my dining room table because I wanted a really big area to work on. And um, I put a lot of towels down, I put a lot of other quilts down, and I put a couple other things, I think, so that the heat would not get to my table. Well, the heat still got to my table, and it ruined my table. But, oh well, such is life. Okay, I'm getting those 
put on here real quick. Okay, so now my backing fabric is perfectly straight. It's flat, we have no wrinkles. And now we can put our batting on. My favorite batting is the warm and white for most quilts. It doesn't show up through quilts like the kind of natural color does. I like this bleach version. Um, sometimes the natural one you can kind of see, especially if you have any white in your quilt or any light colored fabrics. So this one just blends really easily with everything. Um, it comes in different sizes. This is a twin size and um, you can get it on rolls. I just love this kind. There's um, lots of different kinds of batting that you can choose and you kind of just have to play with what you like and see what it is that will work for you. Okay, so now we're gonna get this all straightened out. And I don't really worry about the wrinkles in the batting itself, but I am gonna clip it onto my table here and then straighten it out. So it definitely helps to have a, a large surface that you can work with. And if you don't have that, um, I've heard of people getting together for quilting parties or whatever at someone's house that has a large area or large tables to be able to get their quilts all pinned. Of course, if you are a member with the Journey Back Quilting Club, then you can come meet up at Blakeman's whenever we're meeting and get help there or use the areas to get your quilt basted as well. Okay, and now the quilt top. Okay, so this quilt top is a client's of mine. It's a restoration quilt. Um, I believe her mom made this quilt and it was very well loved. So we took it apart and we're re-putting it together. So it's ready to be quilted now. So then I would just get everything laid out really nice, straight. Of course, everything I pre-ironed before this video so that it was nice and flat and straight. And you just keep petting it and getting all straight, all the wrinkles out. All right, now it's ready. So if your quilt is larger than this, you would just do this section here and then either pull it this way or slide it this way or whichever way to get the next section. So you just work one section at a time. And I'm gonna show you how to do the curved pins first. So I have my cutting mat underneath here, so I'm not gonna cut my table with the pin. And I would just stick it through all three layers. And you can kind of feel where you're at with all of those layers when you hit your mat. Um, spacing, there's, it's pretty much personal preference and how much um, you don't want your quilt to pucker or whatever. If you have, if you're gonna do a really tight stippling and stuff, you might wanna put a little bit more pins, but this is gonna have a really big um, surface area that's going to be quilted. So we're just gonna spread them out here. So then you would just go and pin, say like every other block or so, and get those all nice and pinned. So try to keep your posture straight when you're doing this. You don't wanna hurt your back while you're doing this. Um, sometimes wearing one of those back brace belly things helps, um, or just really concentrate on keeping your core strong and in. Take lots of breaks, stretch a lot. 
have learned all of this the hard way. So learn from my example. Okay, so that would be how you would pin all of them with your little safety pins. Let me show you how to do the pin mores. So if you have some straight pins and these pin mores, they look like little erasers or marshmallows. You would just put them, your straight pin through and then top it off with these little pin mores. And that way when you're quilting it and you're moving the quilt around in your machine, you won't necessarily get poked by one of those. I have found that they're not perfect, like these will stay on really well. Sometimes the quilt would get bunched up and these would pop off. Um, and then of course I would scratch myself with the pin. So the, the safety pins are the best option for doing that. Okay, so you kind of get the gist of that. Let me see what else. Yeah, I think that is the basis of all of how I like to pin and baste my quilt. Pretty easy and straightforward once you get the hang of it. The biggest tip I can give you is just to make sure you have something that's counter height and be patient with it. Get everything ironed really well and just take it one little section at a time. So this is actually going on the long arm. So let me talk to you about that for a second. Let me get these off here. If you're going to have a long armor do your quilt, you want the backing to be at least six inches longer and wider than your quilt top. You do want to have everything ironed nicely. Double check that there are no holes in your quilt. Um, occasionally I'll get a quilt that has um, a seam didn't get matched up very nicely and so there's a big gaping hole in it. Um, there's little threads sticking out everywhere. You wanna kinda of go through and get it all cleaned up for your long armor so that she's not having to clip those as she goes as much, or he. And uh, it just helps the long armor out a lot. Um, a lot of times long armors will provide the batting for you, so you wanna make sure you ask your long armor if they do that or if you need to supply it. And if you need to supply it, ask them what their recommendation is. Um, some long arms like certain different kinds of um, batting. Let me put you back up here. I'd probably be way high. Okay. Let's see if you have any questions or anything. So that's another thing with this batting is um, I really like this warm and white because it doesn't rip on me when I am putting it on the long arm. The Hobbs Natural really was thin and wiggly, so anytime I went to straighten it out under the machine, it would rip on me and it drove me crazy. So this one is really tough and sturdy, so it doesn't rip on me very easily. Um, let's see. With long arming, you don't have to pin baste or anything your quilt together. You're just going to bring them your backing, your batting, and your top, and they're going to put it on the rolls um, separately. They each get their own little roll, so you don't have to even worry about that, which is a blessing and one of the reasons why I got a long arm, so I wasn't killing my back anymore <laughs> putting the fabrics together. So um, remember, this week is um, our first meet and greet at Blakeman's on Thursday, if the weather holds. Um, or is nicer by then. It's from six to eight, and we are having some snacks from Graze and Gather. They're giving a platter to us, or making one for us, and we're going to have a fun time. I'll have the quilt kits ready for you to view, and um, bring a laptop so you can see some of the videos beforehand, and we're gonna have a great time. So I hope you can join us there. Let me go through the comments here real quick. Let's see. Sorry, my studio is very tight lately, so. Oh, yep, yeah. my mom says she used a ping pong table. That was perfect. Thank you, Judy, for putting all of those links in there. Oh, 
All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Josephine and Aaron, Mom, Judy, Pamela, and K Callie. Thanks for coming. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Um, if you have any other tips or tricks that you have found to use when you're basting your quilt, let us know in the comments below. We love learning from each other and um, enjoy this journey. See you later. Bye.